George, uh, of all the uh, of all the questions, the uh, the deep question about why is there anything at all? Why is there something rather than nothing? Uh, sounds like you just throw it off your, your your tongue, but it is the more you think about it, the dizzier you get because. Yeah. Uh, in one sense, and, and this has kind of haunted me in life, that uh, nothing at all, absolutely nothing at all, seems like a more uh, likely uh, scenario than anything very specific, no matter how specific it is <laughs> or how logical our day-to-day -day life yeah. seems. And so you, uh, you you get caught in this, in this way of thinking, because it's a deeper question, really, than the theory of everything in physics, or is there a God, or... Uh, how, how, as a physicist and as a believer, do you deal with this question? Um, I don't think physics can have anything to say about it because physics assumes the existence of a whole lot of stuff. Physics assumes the existence of the laws of physics and something for it to act on. Um, the, the whole of structure of quantum field theory, the whole structure of Lagrangian's <coughs> variational principles, symmetry principles, all of that, is assumed before you can even start physics. And so physics cannot make a beginning out of nothing because it requires all of that stuff, which would have to exist in some platonic sense before it could do anything. Um, the underlying further question is that all of that physics depends on mathematics. Uh, if you take it in the standard way, that old question of the laws of nature are written in mathematical terms and so mathematics also in some sense has to exist before anything physical can exist so you have to have that assumes mathematics is is causative rather than descriptive yeah yeah um so i'm sure that physics itself can't answer this question it's a philosophical question and at a certain level i simply don't know the answer at all i think it's a, a really deep question what I do know is that if people say that physics can explain why something come, came out of nothing, they're simply wrong, because the structure of physics is not nothing. Mm. And so the existence of physics by itself has already said something exists. So this question actually deals with the uh, kind of the naive comeback about uh, atheists who, to, to people who believe in God, you know, where did God come from or yeah, who yeah, created yeah, God? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because um, the the question why is there anything at all deals with questions of, of uh, contingency and necessity. Yeah. Now, is there something that is a necessity that had to exist, as we say, in all possible worlds, no matter what? Well, this is a very ancient theological argument of which I'm not an expert, mm -hmm. but people like Aquinas mm -hmm. thought about this a very long time ago in the theological <coughs> context. Um, in the theological context. Um, I just, I think the following, in terms of human thought, because of the way we think, we can keep drilling down and at some point we just have to take a stand and say, here I stand, I cannot go any further. Mm. This is where I'm going to start my thought. Or equivalently, in, ma in, in logical thought, you have to start off with a set of axioms and you just have to accept those axioms as being what they are. And so, so what are those axioms for existence for you? Um, well... If you uh, <coughs> sorry, if you take the classical theological position as Genesis one, God existed. That's the ground, and the other stuff follows from that. If you are a physicist and you refuse to go in that direction, then you have to assume the laws of physics exist. And Paul Davies has commented that for many physicists, the laws of physics have got the attributes of God. They're <laughs> eternal, unchanging, <laughs> omnipresent, omnis, and so on. And so um, you have to say, that's my ground, the laws of physics is. But that's not enough to cause the universe come into being because the laws of physics are laws in the universe, not laws of... And so the, the attempts which have been made are trying to use laws of what happens within the universe to describe how the universe itself came into existence. That may or may not make sense. Um, but in any case, there's no way you can prove it was true. You can't get back, you can't rerun it. You can have theories of wave functions of the universe or of quantum foam or whatever. Nobody can ever test them. So we, you're in the domain where 
physics is giving way to philosophy, even if you try to make it look like physics, it's actually philosophy. And a lot of physicists, though, would like to kill philosophy or say philosophy is dead or the only good philosophy has become physics and the, yeah. and the only thing left in philosophy is bad philosophy. And if new stuff becomes good philosophy, then it becomes physics. Yeah, well, I think that a lot of my physics colleagues are very naive about philosophy. They are doing philosophy whether they know it or not. And if you don't think about the philosophy you're doing, you're just doing simple-minded philosophy. <laughs>